Hey guys, and before I start this episode of DC Thursday, part of March Mayhem, quick discussions. First, I'm trying to watch Godzilla so I can do a review on Godzilla. But, however, I'm going to be starting to do the Justice League review. And a Justice League review will be simple. First, I decided that I think it's best once the intermission begins of the Justice League. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep make this separate. Like, first I'm going to be watching Justice League. And then when the intermission starts... I'm going to review that part only for for thir this Thursday and next Thursday. Part of DC Thursday. With after the intermission, I will do a review. Part of March Mayhem. So, just want to say... And yes, it's going to be an hour... Longer than Avengers Endgame. But at least this one has a fucking intermission in it. And yes. Oh shit. I forgot to tell you guys. That listener discretion is advice. Again. Because. This is Justice League. The Zack Snyder cuts. And the film is rated R. So, so this episode of DC Thursday and the next episode will be explicit. So, so if you uh, didn't listen to it, but yeah, and also. This is a spoiler warning. If you guys haven't seen the Zack Snyder cut, do so now, because... And again. But... But we're going to get to the first impressions. <sighs> After the uh, intermission, and then... Full-on spoiler time. All right. Welcome aboard, and we will, and I will see you on DC Thursday. Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? When I was trying to get to the this podcast off the ground, I had so many questions. How do I record an episode? Where do I find my background music? How do I get my show on? Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all the other places people like to listen. Where do I find the advertisers? The answer to every one of these questions is really simple. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing and monetizing your podcast. And best of all, it's 100% free and 100% reducedly. Easy to use. So, if you want to start a podcast, go to anchor.fm slash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters already using Anchor. That's anchor.fm slash start. I can't wait to hear your podcast. Hey guys, and welcome to Justice League, part one. Which we're going to do the review in a little bit. It's my first impression of Justice League, part of March Mayhem. Just want to say, it's pretty, it is uh, pretty cool.
my first impression, it's, it's pretty cool. So, Josh Sweden's Justice League, Wonder Woman, ni 1984. You can take y'all's success, well, take y'all's failure and shove it down up your motherfucking ass. Because the Zack Snyder cut is the one that we talking about. And Wonder Woman, you may be my favorite DC movie, but it ain't me. It's you. So, let's say the Zack Snyder cut is the best one of the DCEU. And we're gonna begin with, of course, but although next week is going to be my final thoughts, so therefore, we're going to talk about is chapters one, two, three, and then intermission. If you guys have not seen the, the Zack Snyder cut. This is your final chance, and this is your spoiler warning. If you guys have not seen it, do so now. Well, you were warned. Well, we begin the film with the opening credits. But however, this is going to be split into three parts. First one is Don't Count On It, Batman. We begin with, but we, before we get to uh, part one with, with uh, Don't Count On It, Batman, we begin with uh, Harry Cavill's uh, Superman, who paid the ultimate sacrifice to save the, uh, To save Metropolis from Doomsday. Carried a Krypton a Kryptonian spear, which Kryptonite is Superman's weakness. And then we see Batflag, or Batman, played by Ben Affleck, and Amy Adams is Lois Lane. With the seed, the peg. But they're not the only ones. And we see... Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor. Should have gone with Brian Cranston, a.k.a. Heisenberg. And it is sell those mother boxes. And then we heard, uh, of course, he's not the only one that heard hear the screams. Also, also cyborg. Well. I forgot his uh, alias, but he's played by Ray Fisher. And of course, Mira uh, in a box was activated by uh, Mira of the house of... Oh, Victor Stone, yeah. Oh yeah, Victor Stone. It is see at the at Stone's apartment, the mother box was glowing. And then it was shut off. And then next, we see at the sea with Ostrom, I think that was Ostrom, played by William Defoe. And next, we see Mera with, played by, I'm not gonna say her name, after the Johnny Depp, after the uh, Johnny Depp case, I refuse to say her name. Until she gets recasted. Solve the butterbox glowing.
and then bring up the whole thing. And then here are the silver screams. We go to the land of the Amazons in the mother box. <sighs> Sorry, I got up early for this. For this, but hey. But hey, I would rather get up early so I can watch so I can watch this. This next Snyder Cut. So fuck y'all for say that's too early. And we see the land of the Amazons. And a mother box was glowing. And then it cracked. One of the episodes said, Alert the Queen. And then we get to part one. With the quote, Don't count on it, Batman. Which was a quote that Aquaman had used. And we see. Ben Affleck go in the ice sled looking for Arthur Curry. <laughs> Whose father is played by Jago Fett, Bobo Fett, and the clone troopers himself, Tamora Morrison, but he's not in the movie. And we see a fisherman speaking Iceland to Arthur Curry, aka Aquaman. Played by Jason Momoa, who's also Drogo on Game of Thrones. And that, it would have would have been cool if he's also in a comedy. I mean, like like a Billy Clark. Five However. So yeah, however, back to what I'm saying, of course, you know, the fishermen say that they are broke. And they are poor. And Bruce Wade, of course, was hell. Was lifted by by Arthur and Arthur was looking pretty pissed. Let's tell shown thousands of dollars. Cash. And a little girl took the cash. Hey, give it to the one who he's interrogating with. And then they were having a talk and Arthur just called Gotham a shithole. Well, if anyone mentions Chicago, that's what that's what I would call as much. A shithole, but you know. But that's besides the point, but, you know. But then, he used the quote, I see what he did there. Don't count on it, Batman. His reply, then, he mentioned that he witnessed Clark Kent, aka Kal-El, aka Superman. No, dying it alongside him in battle. And then he was really, really no. Well, I've said what he said, and of course the Icelander were singing. We're singing too. And we saw Amy Adams with Oh, I'm sorry. And we see Martha Kent visit a gravesite of her adoptive son, Clark Kent. Then carrying a U-Haul. And of course their farm, of course her farm, is being foreclosure by the bank. Named Comanche Bank. And then we see Amy Adams. 
in a row of Lois flying, delivered a coffee to to a to a police officer in Metropolis, and and the officer thanks and the the police chief thanks thanks her for the for the coffee, and she gave up the coffee to the police line with. Uh, of course, the memorial site where the Congress had had, uh, you know, an event of Batman vs. Superman, Donna Justice. I still like the movie, however. You know? And yes, I still love the Man of Steel. So fight me, yeah. And of course, uh, with uh, with the negotiation that failed, Bruce Wayne went back to uh, his his butler Alfred, and Alfred was complaining that it was too cold over there. And that's him to go somewhere nice, like Fiji. Oh, sorry, like I like, got uh, I don't know, like several places. Oh, Cancun and uh, Tiana and Fiji. But Bruce is not giving up. Not by a long shot. And then we see the hostages, of course, say, yeah. The, the smoke room terrorists going in with uh, Bruce. Sorry. Going in, which is the same events of the Josh Whedon cuts, but however, this one is more, more profane, like no joke, that, that it's really more profane than the last one, of course, one of the uh, terrorists told the hostages to shut the fuck up, yeah, Yeah, say shut the fuck up. I mean, sure, but it's never been used, but now it's been used. Yeah, I get that a lot. But I then stood it up to the statue, it's Diane. And then, of course, they called the bluff to the police, to the London police, or Scotland Yard. But here comes Diana saving the day. And they were. Dolling the Diana and well, same as the last time, carries the lasso and then carries the lasso and then and then pretty mad. And then she fought off the Terrors of the Fetty, the ones who are on the trip. And then, of course, sorry if I have to say that again. I know I'm not supposed to say, in a course, but it's my show, goddammit. I can do, I can, I can say whatever the fuck I want. And as she threw the bomb at the sky, and then exploded and then of course with with them eating like lambs in the slaughter he was gonna shoot the hostages but air comes Diana using her bracelets bulletproof bracelets
And then he ran out of bullets and then... Yeah, he may be fast on firing the gun, but Diana is faster on deflecting him. And of course, she was really not pleased with him. And then, of course, there was the explosion. The leader of the terrorist group did not survive it. But she and the hostages did. And everyone just celebrated her as a hero and a savior. And the little girl, of course, was really happy saying she wants to be like her someday. And Diana is very glad to hear it. But back to the Am land of the Amazons, they, yep, and these women, yep, these, yep, and these Amazon warriors are preparing for the worst. But now without Diana's mother, the queen. And then she was worried about she's worried that all hell's going to break loose with Diana. Well, not with Diana, but the uh, with the mother box. And here comes the. Those bug things you saw at the beginning of the Justice League. But they arrived in the land of the Amazons. And we saw Steppenwolf, who is a bad looking motherfucker. No joke! It's like I say, it's a bad looking motherfucker. I'm not kidding. You know, because it's the golden armor makes him look menacing of all, of all circles of hell. And then, and then, yeah, they try to take it, but, but, the queen beat him to the punch, or in that case, beat him to the lasso. And then, of course, the cue to attack. And of course, there were like massive body counts of the slides of the Amazonians. But right before they uh, strike, she just told the told the ladies to shove them. To show them her, you know, their fear, and they reply with, "We have no fear." Yep, and I say, "Whew!" Love to, I love these Amazonian beauties, and of course, but unfortunately, the devastating part of see is seeing the beautiful women die. Just like with Talia Al Ghul from from Arkham City. Oh God, I missed her so much. God, I miss her so much. But of course, the Queen told the the warriors to seal up the stadium, and then the stadium was sealed up, and then two episodes. Can't hold on much longer, but she made it as she did the landslide, like a like a softball, like if she were in a softball team. And then, and then we get to, of course, where she, where the queen rode on the horse. Well, actually, not rode on a horse. Saw, hey, it fell. 
and of course committed sacrifice, and then told them to take the mother box. But some of Seven Wolf's warriors, insectoid, some insectoid warriors, and of course, Steppenwolf survived the water. Well, the rest of the episode is surrounded then. She pursues after Steppenwolf to get the mother box. But it cost them a lot, and of course, the Steppenwolf. Just, just dropped the box and told her that she can't say uh, that this box and she can't say the Amazonians neither. And then of course we have the uh, we have the Amazonians who are really charging, but they were too light. Steppenwolf's got the Butterbox, and he is going to the land of men, or in that case, planet Earth. Yep, we planet Earth, however. And the queen is told him to light the beacon. And one of the episodes, of course, say, but the beacon was never, it's never been lit up for 5,000 years. And she said, no, men won't. She will. And who is she referring to? She, none other than her daughter, Diana Prince, a.k.a. Wonder Woman. And that's it for Part one for for Batman for Superman Dawn of Justice. So we're gonna go to part two, which I will reveal next week. But there's a rule: once the intermission hits, that's it for this episode. And we're gonna continue on with part two for next week. That's the rules, everyone. You know. Don't complain if I if I'm not gonna do this fully. But you know the rules. Once the intermission hits, that's it for this episode. And after the intermission, next week, but next week, after the intermission's over, it's time to continue on. But but once the intermission hits, this episode's over. For now. And next week will be part two of the Snyder Cut. All right, I'll get back to y'all with part two. And we're back with uh, part two called The Age of Heroes, but it still counts as Justice League Part 1. And, and I told you, like, playing at the end of Part 1. You guys know the rules. Once, once the intermission hits, that's the end of the episode for now. And Part 2 will be coming next week of the other half, which is after the intermission. So we begin with uh, we begin with uh, Bruce Wayne's uh, search for the hero, and it's going absolutely nowhere. So yeah, however. But there is one he, he got his eye on, and it's, of course, none other than Barry Allen, a.k.a. The Flash. Well, that's pretty much the same as uh, the Joss Whedon. 
the the theatrical cut of Justice League. Directed by Joss Whedon. But, like I say, on my first impression, I, I am amazed by the Snyder Cut. But back to what I'm saying. The next thing we, we saw is, is Diana working on the statue. She was you know, working on this statue, the sculpture in it. And there's a French, there's a man to speak in French, but it's just, you know, several things, but it's a complaint, the same as the, but, and we got the uh, breaking news from BBC about the, uh, about the fire at the, the land of the Amazons. Which is like an ancient uh, temple. It's like an ancient temple. And then she she made the torch, grab it apply while while avoiding the police. She grabbed a plank, a wood plank, wrapped it in cloth. Lit up with uh, gasoline or, or oh wait or Dan or like one of the things you you start a barbecue with when you're making charcoal. And of course the and and a set of matchboxes and blah blah. You got a torch. So. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it for not not for this chapter, but it's pretty much it for uh, how them how to make yourself a a torch without a human being. But but then she of course got the arrow and a message from her mother. That the uh, that the apocalypse world is coming, and then Diana went down and it plays an arrow, and the and the torch, and there's a hole like like insert an arrow here, like insert a here arrow, the arrow here, and then look at the artifact. And then we get to Dr. Syed Stone, who's Victor's father, and of course who lost his wife. And of course he was clocking out early. And then he saw the janitor and told him to have a good night. And the janitor was clear and then he saw and he's like, what the? Well, save it all three bad tip. What? You're not going to say, what the fuck? Because this is an R-rated film. You know? And then he was grabbed. Oh, what? Wait. Holy shit, he was grabbed. And we can hear his scream. And then Cyrus went back in the course was see the damage that was caused. And and he was walking around, walking around, walking around. Well, not not walking around the uh I was walking around but and he was being asked by uh, Brian. And like an interrogation, but then Where's the janitor? Same as the last. Being placed in quarantine. Yup. Three years, or two and a half years prior to the coronavirus. 
Yeah. Yeah, and I had to be placed in quarantine that time. And we're off their flight right now, and the Fisher Red is shit out of luck. As I think he was carrying too many crafts. It's a ship was sinking. Yes. It's, you know. Well, we should remind him that the uh, Deadly's catch is no longer on the air. But, however, Arthur Curry, Heaven, and Sanctum, and then placed the nearly drowned fisherman on the table. Literally. And then, then told his uh, fisherman to, to respect the storm next time. And then go up to the bartender. And he. And he poured himself some glass of chocolate milk. Well. Uh, oh no, that's me. I'm pouring myself a glass of chocolate milk. Why did he pour it for a, and a glass on the author? Whiskey! Oh. Nah. Whiskey's too strong for me. I'm more of a vodka kind of guy. Yeah, like I say, give me a bottle of vodka, and I'm bound to drink it. So, however, with the uh, Justice League, sorry, oh sorry, however, with Vodka Man, he grabbed a bottle. It's it. It's on that fisherman. He said, and then he was drinking a whole bottle, but not a whole bottle, but a already poured up bottle. And he said, and he said the others. Well, you know, and then, and then Falco, and then Falco of, uh, of all people, just contacted Arthur, and told him that still, that he's still, uh, he's the rightful king of Atlantis, and of course, he's told him he's not. Wait a minute, is that, is that the same dialogue as uh, Aquaman? The same exchange? Come on, I thought it'd be the starter cut of Justice League. Not James Wan's Aquaman. Well, it's nice to see a William the Fall in an R-rated movie. Minus the being a drunken sailor and almost kissing the up, almost kissing the new Batman, Robert Pattinson, and of course, you know, and minus the farting. Well, excuse me for mentioning The Lighthouse, which is a thriller. And it starts the two, William Defoe and Robert Pattinson. Who I'm looking really looking forward to the next Batman, but unfortunately, due to COVID, it was delayed to 2022. Fucking COVID-19. Yeah, I got the vaccination and I unfortunately lost my debt, but never that's beside the point. And Fulcrum told him that, and of course, he can't, you know, that that he can't, uh, that the boat surfaces are in danger, both below, which is the sea, and above, which is land. And then told him to take the trial, you know, his mother's trial. But Oscar 
refused to take it. And so Focal, the Focal, had dropped it. And however, we are closing in. And then we get to what I call the Age of the Hero. Oh wait, before we're going to get to Diana and Bruce having a conversation, we get to Steppenwolf, who's calling out for the seed. For the seed. Wait. They're calling out for the seed? Why aren't they not calling out for Dark Side? That's a, my minor complaint, but. But the seed looks really menacing of all hells. Just like a Steppenwolf in its armor. And then, of course, he's got some debts to pay. A debt? What, what kind of debt? Like, uh, like, uh, 500k dollars? Or, uh, or, uh, the debt? Oh, right. No, he's talking about the other two murder bosses. Once the two and the Unity joins in, they're, the world that we're living in would be theirs. Like the others. And then of course, he was really, you know, happy. Well, not really happy, but just made a vow for Dark Side. And get the CJ for Dark Side before turning back to, to the rock. And, yep, the same rock is on into the dark. By Claudia Gray, the Star Wars High Republic book. Like Geo. But I'll get into that depth in a bit. Well, I'm not sure if I'll place it on March Ma March Mayhem or 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 the May the fourth edition of the Wednesday Wakeheads. Other than that, so so we're going to. Continue on. And Diana was was visiting was visiting with uh, Bruce Wayne. And and just told him about the folklore that the Amazons given. And it was a war that on Earth with Dark Side. And Dark Side was was looking more like a more like King Leonidas from his from the Zack Snyder movie 300. More the Dark Side where he's in armor. Well, you know, kind of like a a shirtless and almost naked looking Spartan. He was a almost naked looking Spartan. And then, of course, preparing the war are the Lanterians, the man, the men, the Atlanteans, and the ones who show up late in the party, the Amazons. Yes, but the queen and her second in command, her sister. Which is of course, who's of course played by Robin, Robin Wright, the one who's married to Sean Penn. So yeah, and also replacer of Kevin Spacey for House of Cards. And then. The war begins, and they attack, and the uh, and the lecturer, the alien-looking species, 
used to read. We would stop and say, holy shit, that was a pretty cool effect. Including the cat, sorry, dismemberment by cutting off his hand. Cut off his hand, and then, and then finishing him off. Like well, killing him, and of course the battle continues. And Dark Slide using that weapon. Man, that motherfucker is mean. No joke, cause he is a mean motherfucker. That weapon, not making it look menacing, but actually a killer. Destroyed the Amazons, the man, the man, and the Atlanteans alike. And until he was with the King of Atlantis. Until his he got his shoulder. And oh my god, the gore looks amazing. And then uh, he was mortally wounded. But one of the one of the Amazons fire an arrow and make sure they never sure dark side would never come back again and it's just were destroyed and the mother boxes were never unified and then and then the three boxes were given were given to the three men, Atlanteans, and Amazons alike to make sure they were stored safely. Uh, yeah, with the uh, first with the Atlanteans, which we know what's gonna happen next. And then the Amazons, which, which Steppenwolf already had, had had received. And, and where man had buried the motor box to make sure it was never been discovered. However, it did and it's at Victor Stone's apartment. And speaking of Victor Stone, his father came by and asked about, you know, but the monsters know about the monsters? And Victor just told him that, you know, gave him a lecture on creating one, which is, of course, his own son, who was a famous football player, as you've seen on the trailer. Yeah, that's Victor Stone. But we're going to get to that in a bit. If Right, if it's before or after the intermission, we're going to get to that in a bit. So, of course, and of course, they, the enemy is already here. In the age of heroes would be no more. And that's, and that's going to do about it for part two, age of the heroes. So, we're going to go to part three. And maybe after a uh, part, hold on. Maybe after part three, it would be intermission time. And and again, end of the episode for now. All right, I'll I'll see you guys shortly.
Josh and the, the Amanda show, all that, and of course, the course like Zoe 101, iCarly, Victorious, Seven Cat, and Henry Danger. Yeah, because he got fired for such a quick finish. And then, he saw and then look how beautiful she is. And then he saw a bunch of hot dogs. Wait. Oh, but, but, but what about her going through her death? This is a dog, don't type to grab a hot dog. I mean, you're not Sonic the Hedgehog. Are well, you sure you're bad, man? But you ain't Sonic the Hedgehog. He don't have the power to, uh, you know, to close things down. And then he grabbed the beautiful woman. It saved her. But the car wasn't so lucky, though. And thank God she survived it. Thanks to Barry Allen, aka The Flash. And then, of course, goes to the, uh, the word the doctor has, and then, every hot dog, without mustard, without ketchup, and without buns. I mean, I mean, it's, uh, it's not like Harry. Harry Don of uh, Dumb and Dumber, played by Jeff Daniels. That scene where he's a dog groomer and they want his job because the dogs were covered in ketchup and mustard. Well, Lloyd, however, gets fired because he forgot he forgot her luggage and her flight was already was already taken off. Is, is a woman he loved. But, and then he's like, do I start on Monday? Which is a funny one. But, but with the uh, side jokes out of the way, it all changes. 
And there's what we never saw in theaters before. The origin story of Victor Stone. Of how he became Cyborg. Well, it begins at the Gotham City University football game, which they're like points behind. And of course, the course around 15 seconds left. In the Victor Stone, or 30 seconds left, Victor Stone was the captain of the Gotham City University football team. I'm not sure if it's the same uh, Gotham City, Gotham City uh, football team from the Dark Knight Rises. You know, I mean, the church sat the same color, gold and black, your jersey, and they, they have the same black helmet, like you, you see on the Dark Knight Rises, for fame, and, and implode the uh, football field, leaving one football player to survive, the one who made the touchdown. But the game had to be canceled. To imploding field. So, yeah, pretty much it. But that's pretty much it for a uh, run. So, yeah. But, he was also in the office. Well, well, outside, his mother was uh, talking to a talks to the dean of the college. It's all that he's dumb. He's not graduating because he just hacked the system of hacking into a great system. But his mother has defended his action because it's not she. She knew that he didn't hack into the computer system to change the grade. He, she was actually, he was actually helping his classmates pass. You know, that she deserved another, you know, opportunity. And then back to the football field, I gotta admit, that is a pretty awesome action. You know, the slow motion, make it all the way to the touchdown, and the Gotham City University won the game. His mother celebrated, and he was very, very happy to see her. But, but then it turned into shock because well, it turns into a disappointment because his father's a no-show. And then his mother is taunt. You know. The difference between her and her brother, they're both busy, but one didn't have the time because the dude was stuck in a lap, but she, however, has the time. You got to witness her son winning the football game. And, and of course, he was not even surprised by it. And then she said that both, both she and her husband were, will always be proud of victors. For, uh, you know, be proud of victors for, you know, for previous. And then of course, and of course that there's the holy shit moment right here. With, with a truck that's crashing through. Killing, killing his mom, but left him 90% bodyless. 90% bodyless. And then Dr. D. Stallis, or Sailor Stone, or uh, Sailor Stone, Dr. Stone, came to the hospital in a rush, and the nurse told him that his wife didn't survive the crash. And her son won't neither. And he was just really, really upset to see his son on a respiratory. And he said that he will not let his son die. 
and thus he created Cyborg. Second, and of course, it, and uh, it, holy fucking shit, that is just, he just threw the Atlantean, and the Atlantean was bleeding in the back of the head, and it ain't like a gory way too, just like I reviewed that Justice League. Would be interpreted by the step of it is boring at the time. But then that way, 
Now that it's a step old Lango, and of course, I, I dig the new look from the Zack Snyder cut. And of course, they say when after trade people grab this fire and knew where the mother box is at. And several will reply with the Atlantic. He already betrayed his people. And then we see Diana. You know, hanging around at the lab or at Wine Tech with Bruce Wayne's butler, played by Jeremy Irons, Alfred Pennyworth. Who, of course, was. You know, of course, who has his own spin off series and. The show on Fox. But if it would have been on Fox, I would definitely be get interested in Pennyworth. And see what his life was like before being the Waynes, and before the tragedy of the Waynes, and before and before becoming Bruce Wayne's adopted father and and Target. But, the side point, he was bringing D to the court, he was passing out the gauntlet for Batman. And it works! And then we got to, of course, with, we said, meet me now. To the location, and, and, and Alfred replied with, Well, sure, you got yourself a steak there, Diana. Then, Diana meets Vic in the exact location. And then, of course, you know, saying that, that, that she's uh, recruiting. She is recruiting. And, of course, Batman. 
which was gonna come this year, but it was postponed next year because because of him and his production team had co had COVID. But yeah, no joke. But can he decide? A, I don't need to see a dialogue in it. It's in. It. He's a snack. It, it's a snack. It's making his stomach into a black hole. It's a, he's a snack hole. Snack hole. Oh, I thought you said asshole. Because you're kind of being an asshole, man. Black, black say bear bell. But you're kind of. But you are kind of being a snack. But. But he's a snack, so we're good. But same reply, because he wants to go on he says, I'm rich. Yeah, I already did that, so we're not going to go do that again today. The car hog and then Bruce White could have flipped at the part of it. It's an R-rated movie, for fuck's sake. And then all hell was uh, breaking loose. With, of course, of course, uh, Dr. Stone fixed that. Well, of course, fixed that. How about those? Was in the lab. And of course, going back to his work, as you can imagine, son, his son was the cause of it. But nope, it was a pair of demon, and he just took him hostage. So, took him to the lair of, uh, of, uh, of Steppenwolf. And hold them in the other side to talk to each other the of the mother of And back in the lens, with Mira. Having a uh, conversation. With Mira having a conversation with one of the Atlanteans. Played by who she who is she must not be named. Who she must not be named in your credit. But there is gonna be a mention. In the court say. Yeah, the cruel. Well, so he's got work and then he's crazy and he's cruel. That would be pretty much said about Johnny Depp. And and I would I would say the C word, which is number four. One of the seven words you cannot say on TV. But you know, but it pretty much sums it all. But hey, she who must not be named. And then, of course, G. and Alexius were battling Steppenwolf, who were, of course, trying to defend. And they gave Steppenwolf a nosebleed. And he almost killed her, and if she wasn't played by Amber Heard, it's like. But I was like, earlier, like, no, don't kill her. But, I was, but I'm going to give a damn, because she's playing by. And then Arthur Perry came to save the day. But it was too late. Steppenwolf had come the second part of the box. And he's back to Atlantis. Yep, it was back to Atlantis for a uh, Or 
Atlanta, Georgia. Who fled blue lately? I gave it the politics, so. Sorry about that. But then, of course, he would say, we need to see other people. Yeah, I don't blame him. It's time that we that we get rid of that cunt. Play mirror. And go be off. In the land. And then of course the uh the mutterbox. The mutterbox has so went up. And And of course, several of us announced to the scene that the second mother box has been opened and awakened, which creates a force field. Of course, what's going to create the shift and the sea so is that going to do what you got to do? And then, of course, Send off the pair he would make about if once they find the Starbucks, they will be unstoppable, but they will he will do the usual thing, interrogate. Do an interrogation like he did to the Atlanteans. And he would but he would rip one up if they don't fall. And thus we get an intermission break. And I'm still waiting for a tweet from Zach Snyder because. Oh, for fuck's sake! Now we're in part four. Is that an intermission yet? As I need an intermission so I can. So I can get a break and watch it on Sunday and then Godzilla and then Godzilla and then do this film for March Mayhem next Thursday. Alright, guys, be right back. Nine 
hostages now because his father was taken. Taken hostage. Of course, we have. Yes, and the other slab, and then leaves with. And then leaves with the. Uh, Tunnel. They go in the tunnel and then, of course, they're trying to rescue the hostages. And then they cross the bridge. Let's see. Barry Allen did it quickly. Diana just jumped. And Bruce, using a grappling hook or a zip line to the uh, the bridge end, of course, Victor flies. Using the hover flyers. And of course, I'm just I'm waiting for the, for the fucking intermission in this movie. You know? Just. We are like. Wait. Uh, you know what? Actually? This is actually a good time to stop. You know what? Change the rules. There's no intermission, though. We're gonna take a break after this, so. But not right now. We are going to be the chorus with because I got a lot uh, on my plate because I got Winter Soldier. Sorry, Falcon and Winter Soldier to do tomorrow. To schedule on Tuesday. I got Godzilla to do, watch, and Godzilla to do on, you know, to do the schedule on Monday, and I got, uh, 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 oh yeah, and I got, and I need to take a break and watch, finish watching Justice League, and schedule it for next Thursday. Just in time to end with Godzilla. Versus King Kong. Godzilla versus Kong. To end. To end the night. But like I say, this is just a. That is just a motherfucker. It didn't have no intermission, but. You know what, actually? Let's, let's get back. And hey, let's see. The same thing. Steppenwolf interrogates. Interrogate the scientist and interrogate the source. Dr. Dr. Sailor Stone. And her fix day to day. Save his father. And then, of course, Diana makes the save. It's Wolf. was impressed with Amazon. Well, the whole time Amazon is not the uh, online shopping retailer Amazon, formerly owned by the main band XL, and of course, the alien lucky thing from South Park, Jeff Bezos. So, yeah. Jeff Bezos? Oh, sorry. Steppenwolf was fighting with Diana. It was a flash and inside door for rescuing the hostages. Of course, Barry Allen going quick, quick, quick. While, while Vic is carrying his father. To, uh, you know, to team up with Diana against Steppenwolf. And they are, of course, with, you know, fighting with the parent demons. Steppenwolf and then, of course, Barry Allen, Steppenwolf, and Bert Paul Rock, and then the last one was going to kill. Going to kill the, 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 the
Save you the day. goes in to help you know this bat you know fight bad guy and help sword lady hey would you be the sword wielding amazon no or or hot lady this girl did all this one of the sexiest you know one of the sexiest women not just of israel but
But this is the price of pride. An intended-day looking motherfucker right here is here again. And of course, it's dark side. And it's Devonville with very took out his uh, helmet and have a shirt and kneel. Okay, kneel down to uh, kneel down. Oh yeah, kneel down the dark side. And tell them about the uh, third. About the third.
Martha can't visit Lois Lane. Her would have been daughter-in-law. Her would be daughter-in-law if the Clark hadn't sacrificed himself to save to save everyone. That's got me. The opening credits were pretty. Pretty amazing in the Zack Snyder cut. So they're having the heart to heart, and of course, they I have in the world would have never loved that spark like the way she walked in. And of course, Martha told us that she had to sell the farm. And I'm sorry about that. No, do this again, but. It's all in the theatrical cut, but hey, you know what? But you know what, actually? She, yeah, she delivers powerful for more. Amy Adams, and I think Diane Lane has a mark of head. You know, like I saw her in the Let Him Go with, with Kevin Costner. But forgive me for being side for a bit. But other than that, we're good. We're good. We're good. And other than that, of course, leaves. And her eyes are out like, holy shit! Another parademon? But it wasn't a parademon, and a cake. Then it's like, Oh, the Great Martian? Like, I I really said that in that tone. So I was just... I was just excited to see the Great Martian. And then turned to his say, and we said to him, of saying, the world needs you too, Lois. And then he walks, and then he exits, her apartment door. And of course, it was really upset, you know. But the love flame before, before the great Martian was revealed, told told Martha that she supposed to stay to stay in her with her. Part four. Well, since there's no intermission, 
Sadly, since there's no intermission, I think there's other four parts, like like the uh, part five, part six, part seven. For the epilogue, yeah, of course. I think it's best that we end this episode for now, since there's no intermission. I'm making my own intermission. So, so, here we go. So, enjoy a week of intermission, everyone. All right, guys, that's going to be about it for DC, for DC Thursday, part of March Mania. For now, for now, because like I say, I got, I got others, I got, I got others to do. Like, tomorrow, I'm going to be doing Falcon and Winter Soldier, and Scouts for Tuesday, and on Sunday, I'm going to watch Godzilla, the 2014 one, and then Scouts for Monday, and of course, I got I gotta finish watching the other half of of Justice League of involving Superman. Sorry, involving what's gonna happen next. And however, we're gonna end it for now. But regarding to the scene with Superman, Joker, and the and the Crusader being back. But, like I say, this is going to go into a week intermission. But, you know, just let's call it, let's take a break for now. And I need to take a break for now. And I need to uh, do this. Alright guys, that's good about it. I will see you guys next week. For the other half of the review.